Hello again, it's uh, chapter 2 video here. Um, this video we're looking at field variables, local variables, um, we're looking at scope and lifetime of variables. Um, we're going to have a, a quick look at this section. Now it's important um, that you have a good understanding of variables and the different kinds of variables because they um, make up a large proportion of your programs. Um, these concepts are going to be very useful later on. So, some um, some words for you. Uh, definition. Uh, this is the allocation of memory for a specific type. So, um, we can we've seen definitions of fields before, um, uh, where it just has the name of the variable um, done in the definition. So, in this case, int x. Or in a field, it might be something like public int x with an access modifier. Um, you'll then have something called assignment, and assignment is found in methods and in constructors where you assign a specific value or um, another value to the uh, um, variable um, or field, so in this case x equals 3. You can also uh, do things um, like a definition and assignment together, where you do int x equals 3, and then you're defining and assigning uh, both at the same time. So underneath underneath it all, all you're doing is, um, in this case here, we've got our uh, representation of memory. You, um, as What Java does is it assigns the memory address as the name of a variable, in this case x, um, and then the content then becomes the value of 3. Um, we can represent 3 in this 8-bit uh, one here, and you'll see that one at the bottom of the memory address of 2004 is the encoding for the number 3. Um, so that's a little bit of a background into variables, definitions and assignment. Um, we discussed that fields are one sort of, a, of a variable, also known as an uh, instance variable, um, and they are defined at the top of the class as we've seen. Now, uh, the important bit here is that um, the values within those fields are accessible and are accessible throughout the code, uh, throughout the class, and throughout the lifetime of an object. Okay. Uh, now another kind of variable is a parameter. Now this is like the parameters which we gave in the constructors. Um, they're often defined, well they are defined in the method of a, uh, uh, in the header of a method, um, or the header of a constructor. Um, and they used to receive um, values from other places, so again this is, this is a kind of variable. Um, every time the method is called though, that variable gets created again, and when you pass um, a uh, value to that method, then the parameter effectively just uses that uh, value each time and is present, so it's reset. Um, this parameter is only short-lived, so if I've got a parameter in the constructor, I cannot get access to that parameter um, in another method because it's it's only local to that constructor. Similarly, if I have a parameter in another method, I can't get access to that um, parameter um, from the constructor. So parameters are short-lived. Um, methods um, define, uh, can define and assign their own local variables. Um, again, they're a bit like parameters in that they're short-lived. Um, and the difference between parameters and, vari and local variables is that they are set. They're generally hard-coded into, um, uh, into the code. So it's set either th through uh, another parameter or through a value set in the code. Um, often used for temporary calculation and working things out. Um, and they exist as long as the method is being executed and are only accessible from within the method. So that brings up something to talk about um, in terms of where uh, variables are accessible from. Um, and the words we use to describe this is known as scoping um, and lifetime. So in terms of scope first, um, if we look at the print ticket method shown up on the screen there, we can see um, that there is uh, no parameters in there. So all of the um, variables within that uh, method are, are accessible. They're all, field, um, all fields and all instance variables, so they're accessible throughout the code. Um, so the scope of those variables is from the start of the braces at the start of the uh, class to the end of the braces at the end of the class. So that the scope of those field variables um, and instance variables is throughout the class. So each block can define a new scope, so uh, a new class um, will have a, a scope, um, and a method will have a scope, and, um, and 
a statement could potentially have a scope. You could have scopes which are nested, um, so a block inside another block, inside another block, etc. Um, the scope is static and shown um, in the code uh, as a textual representation of the scope, and the lifetime is dynamic. So let's just break out of this and have a quick look at the, the um, scope. So if you had a class like this, public class tester. Oh, let's just uh, now there's our brace and there's our brace there. Any variables defined in here are accessible throughout the class. If we then create our constructor, then create our constructor uh, called tester. I'll ignore the access modifier at this point, and then that then has its parentheses and its brace there. Any variables created in here. Or only only have the scope of within the uh, tester um, constructor. Now, any variables created um, on the outside here have scope throughout the rest of the class. Um, any other methods created, then uh, they any variables and parameters created within those methods only have uh, the scope of that method. However. Um, anything created in the class has scope for the uh, for the for the whole class. Um, the scope of the variable is the block in which it's declared. So um, going back to our diagram here, the red there um, defines a block. So the word block will find this bit here. That is a block there. And then in terms of the class itself, this is defined as the class block. Um, the lifetime of a local variable is the time of execution of the block in which it's declared. So for the time that the red block here, which is the, um, uh, the constructor, for the time that is executed, that is the lifetime of any variables declared um, or defined there. Uh, the scope of the field is its whole class, and the lifetime of, of the field is the lifetime of its containing object. So any, any object is created, that's um, however long the object lasts is however long the field will last. Considering that now, how might we re, um, write the refund balance method? Here's um, the method, as the, the uh, final method as to what it looks like, uh, and it's a pretty standard looking method. The thing which is new here, though, is that we create um, a local variable inside the method. So here we've got our local variable which has been created. The amount to refund as a type into now it's only a temporary temporary place um, for for doing things with. So we do is we say amounts to refund equals the balance. Um, we then return the balance to zero so that the balance becomes zero of the ticket machine and then we return the amount to refund. So we're aware exactly what the balance was um, and we get that number and then we can do something with that number um, in terms of run another method somewhere else which gives the person the money out of the machine um, or something along those lines. So that's a local uh, placeholder, a local variable which is created to do that job. Okay, so that's variables um, and scope and lifetime of variables. Hopefully um, you've uh, understood some of that. If you uh, have any questions, um, then let me know and we'll go through it in the classroom. Um, otherwise, there's plenty of um, exercises in the PowerPoint here uh, for creating methods um, and there's some reviews there as well. So in your time, have a look at the, uh, the final part of that presentation for some extra um, uh, labs and exercises and I will see you in class.